Everybody get up. It's time to suck now. This movie broke me. I'm gonna start this review by quoting the great Bill Murray. I don't know if he came up with this line of dialogue, but I, I believe he said it and that's enough for me. He said, it's hard to win an argument with a smart person, but it's damn near impossible to win one with a stupid person. I think that can be applicable to movie criticism as well. It's very hard to criticize a smart movie. It's damn near impossible to criticize a stupid one. Speaking of which, let's talk about Space Jam, A New Legacy. Now, cards on the table, I'm not a fan of the first Space Jam. It's, it's passable. Like, I can watch it and, and think, man, why am I watching this? Space Jam A New Legacy is just so insulting to its very core, I don't even know where to begin. Now, I should back up and talk about my opening dialogue, where I said it's almost impossible to criticize a stupid movie. Because many people are going to be like, what are you talking about, Adam? It's really easy to do that. Well, when you get to the level of Space Jam A New Legacy, and since it is a family, family-friendly film, there's a lot of caveats you put on that. There's a lot of this protective bubbling around these types of movies where people will automatically shove out these excuses. This movie's just supposed to be fun. This movie's not supposed to be American History X. Just turn your brain off. Try having some fun. It's meant for kids. What if I told you, you can have your cake and eat it too? which is not even a fair expression to put on movies like this because that discredits the whole phrase. Having your cake and eating it too means you're doing something that's borderline impossible. Making a competent film for all ages is something that's highly achievable and has been done uh, tons of times. Pixar does it, Disney does it, hell, Warner Brothers has done it themselves. I'm extra fast and furious right now because I just recorded what I consider to be the swan song of my movie critic career, I had already reviewed this film and my audio was not turned on. So if I put out the version I'd already done, it's gonna sound like shit. And unlike Space Jam A New Legacy, I actually care a little bit about the product I'm making. No, I don't have the stupidly large budget they for some reason crapped into this. And I certainly don't have the name recognition on display. And I'm not just talking about King James. I'm talking about like half of the Warner Brothers lineup is in this thing and for no reason at all other than I know that oh remember that cool beans look at that guy where should I begin with this turd of a film LeBron James maybe he looks pissed through this whole thing now I get that his character is supposed to be kind of kind of angry at his son he's, he's very dismissive he was raised a certain way and can't understand why his son doesn't want to play basketball he wants to design video games but fuck dude like, you can be like an Uncle Phil in Fresh Prince and not agree with, uh, you know, with Prince himself, Will Smith, but I can still agree with both of you. I can see both sides, and, and I, have a, I have a warmness and a fondness for these characters. LeBron James is just mad. He's just, he's just angry through this, and I didn't like him. I didn't like his character. He also comes off as incredibly naive because his son Dom is the most gifted talent ever birthed. And I have to apologize if I get this wrong because I was blacking out several times during this film, but I believe his son Dom developed an app that allows him to capture in real time the physical 3D body language of anything it's in front of, translate it to his, his app, and rebuild the character. You can infuse animalistic abilities into them. What, what, just on the fly, just willy nilly. What is this movie? So LeBron's son doesn't want to play basketball, which is all LeBron James knows. And he's serious about it. He takes it very seriously. His kid wants to develop games. Clearly he's incredibly talented at it. And he really wants to take part in this E3 build a bear video game thing that I don't think his son even needs to be part of because he's a, he's a damn, damn talent when it comes to building it. He should be running the E3 event, which I didn't know existed until I saw this film. So guess good marketing, good synergy guys. This movie's definitely about brand synergy. I remember being incredibly pissed off by Ralph Breaks the Internet, not only because it's a shit movie, but because of all the brand integration and just how insulting it was to the viewers, this is like, <laughs> hold my iron giant. We can get way worse. This makes emoji movie script look self-respecting. The only other major character in this is Don Cheadle. We'll get to him in a second as we kind of graze over whatever sort of a plot this is pretending to have. There's an episode of 30 Rock, which if you haven't seen, I highly recommend it. It's hilarious. It's well-written. It's everything this movie isn't. Anyway, 
there's an idea presented called Seinfeld Vision where they're gonna take Jerry and they're gonna put him in all the different NBC shows without Jerry even having to really do anything. This is the exact idea that Warner Brothers presents to LeBron James. They say, hey, we have this new technology that's super advanced where we can put you into any movie, any property without you really having to lift a finger. How cool does that sound? LeBron doesn't go for this, which is very upsetting to the real architect the real puppet master behind the scenes. His name is LG Rhythm, and he's played by Don Cheadle. I told you we'd get there. LG Rhythm, why does that sound vaguely like a different word, Adam? Well, that's because it is. Let me blow your goddamn mind. LG Rhythm. Hmm. Okay. Algorithm. Algorithm? That sounds like algebra. Maybe I should try saying it a couple more times. Algorithm. Algorithm. Algorithm? Holy shit, that's like a that's like a programming term. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Up in here, up in here. Y'all gonna make me go all out. Up in here, up in here. This movie's so freaking deep now. Why is Don Cheadle's character named Algorithm though? What does he have to do with the algorithm? Because he is the algorithm! He's stuck inside of the serververse. You heard me. He's stuck inside of the server verse. In the very building where King James is slowly being wined and dined by executives, there is a server room, massive server room that houses all those beautiful Warner Brothers properties that we've grown to love over the years that they shove down our goddamn throats throughout the film. And inside of these servers is an entire universe that's being held together by Don Cheadle. But Algy Rhythm's mad. Nobody knows all the great things he's doing in the serververse. Nobody knows he's the architect behind the scenes, making all our wildest dreams come true. Like the final season of Game of Thrones, for instance. Game of Thrones is referenced in this film several times because it's a Looney Tunes movie. So, Game of Thrones. So, Casablanca. So, Mad Max Fury Road. So, the Matrix. So, A Clockwork Orange. So, what the fuck is this movie? Using LG Rhythm's algorithm, he has determined that LeBron James is the most popular face in, in, in the universe, basically. I'm starting to glitch out there. <laughs> subscribe for glitches. Only bitches don't subscribe for glitches. Are you a bitches? So it just makes sense to use King James in movies because he's an actor. When this doesn't inevitably work, because it sounds like the stupidest idea ever, Don Cheadle has to cook up another idea. And another idea, he cooks up pretty quickly. And it's to kidnap Dom, thereby forcing LeBron's hand to go into the serververse after him. Through all these different Ready Player One reference planets, like, like the Wizard of Oz, like King Kong, he goes through Harry Potter world. It's so damn cool, and it was just done a few years earlier in Ready Player One. So therefore, I'm calling this film Ready Player Dumb. And a lot of people don't even like Ready Player One, so I mean, shit, what are you gonna say about this, experts? This leads me to several questions. When you go into the serververse, a digital representation of yourself is made, a, a copy of sorts is, is presented in this universe. Where your original body goes, however, is, is anybody's guess. They disappear, I know that, because later on, people that are on their phones or watching TV or listening to any sort of tech that's connected can be pulled into this place too. Uh, uh, LG Rhythm is just, is just pulling people in left and right. Were they driving cars at the time? Did those cars just smash into people? Were they flying a plane and the plane just uh, you know crashed into an orphanage? Your guess is as good as mine and the scripts because they don't, they don't bother talking about any of it. Who cares, right? We're here for basketball. We're here for loony stuff. Speaking of basketball, there isn't any until uh, maybe 45 minutes in where we get a little bit of a training montage because the tunes, I guess, forgot how to play from the first movie. We do, however, to the film's credit, get a very lengthy 35, 40 minute basketball game at the end. It's all building to the ending. From the point LeBron is in the serververse to that final game though is a whole lot of shenanigans. It, it's a trip through nostalgia-verse. A lot of member berries. This is the definition of a rant video for me. Holy crap, the structure is just out of control. I have so much to say, but I have no possible way of organizing it. I have to point out that my kids were watching with me, my 12-year-old girl, my 9-year-old son. 
they think like I do because I raise them and I'm there for them. So we have, you know, we have opinions. Sometimes they vary, but for the most part, since I've introduced them to a lot of films, arguably some they shouldn't have seen yet, they have an appreciation for the art. And, and filmmaking is an art. Storytelling is an art. This movie's none of that. There's art on, on the screen, but how it's used is... How it's used is not art. It's, it's, it's disgusting. Their cousin came over. He's nine, borderline ten. Love the kid to death. Very different tastes than my family. Uh, very different movie upbringing. For instance, some movies this kid would watch on repeat would be Shark Tale or a B-movie. Uh, the, the film equivalent of Cancer to me, he quite enjoys. He, 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 likes, he likes those types of movies. So for him watching this movie, he's, he's just loving it. He's eating it all up. He said it was better than the first movie before the first five minutes completed. He loves LeBron James. He mentioned how LeBron does the meme face. I don't know what the fuck that means but he really dug it. He loved seeing Rick and Morty. He was cheering when he saw Rick and Morty, not because he watches it, he can't watch it, but he saw them in Fortnite and he knows that they're cool characters. So yeah, cool. This is where we're at now. This is where we're at now. And I would never shit on a kid's experience watching a film. So I kept my mouth shut through it. I would glance over at my kids who would already be glancing back like, what the hell is this thing? But we stayed quiet, you know, we, we wanted him to have fun. And if you like this movie, you're either nine or an idiot. In either case, good for you. <laughs> we have a cavalcade of silly characters going into different movies and different TV shows and whatnot. Oh, look over there, it's the Animaniacs. Hey, it's the Iron Giant who just gets whored out in all these different movies. Cool, he fist bumped King Kong. I hope they fist me later. Fist bump me later. Sweet, Lola Bunny's in this again. Remember her in the first movie and how hot and sexualized she was as a rabbit, which was weird, but at least it gave me something to watch during stupid Space Jam? They took that away from me! Now I don't even have a sexualized cartoon animal that makes me feel weird about myself to enjoy for a couple hours. God damn it! Lola Bunny is found during the trials of Wonder Woman 84. Remember Wonder Woman 84 and how well that was received? Uh, they, they went all in with that opening number. She's, she's doing the trials. I think Gal Gadot is doing the voice of the animated Wonder Woman. If not, props to the, uh, the voice actor. You sounded very close. I don't know why it's comic book style. I guess this is a comic book universe that, that they go in to find Lola Bunny. Did you know a new Matrix comes out this year? Warner Brothers does. Synergy, baby. The granny does the Trinity pose. <laughs> cool. It's like it's 1999 all over again. Or whenever The Matrix came out and everybody was doing parodies. The only positive I'll give to this film is the final basketball match that, of course, doesn't make a lick of sense. The whole stupid movie doesn't make sense. Algy Rhythm, as far as I know, his entire plot is to pull people into his universe, win a basketball game by defeating LeBron James so that he's respected. Profit? He's already able to pull in every single human being on planet Earth into his stupid server verse. So everybody would know who he is, right? Why does he need the cockamamie scheme to play basketball? He already has godlike abilities. What is his end game here? It makes no sense. Meanwhile, you got boy genius Dom who's playing for him because he can't have a two minute conversation with his dad that Don Cheadle's character is that in fact the bad guy and gonna keep them stuck there. Like nobody's even taking two seconds to figure out the fact that this is fucking nuts. They're inside of a computer simulated world. No one seems to bat an eyeball about it. Meanwhile, they're also pulling in professional athletes, giving them skyrocketed abilities, perfect handling, perfect shooting, perfect accuracy. Like, what the fuck? How are they even close to winning this game? The boy designed and developed the video game that they're playing. The version of basketball they're playing is based on the kid's game. So he should be able to win this thing in like two seconds flat. I know I'm overthinking this, but who cares? It's so stupid, my mind can't even handle it. Why isn't Lola Bunny hot anymore? But don't think about it. Look at the crowd. Look at all the people. There's the Batman characters from the 70s show who are for some reason not actually watching the ball game in front of them. They're just making dumbass faces looking around like, Ooh. <laughs> and then me. <sighs> Seriously, the live action characters who, by the way, look nothing like the original actors who played them. 
They were all obviously shot ahead of time and then green screen popped into this film. And they were just told to make the most over the top obnoxious facial expressions. They're just like, ah, look how fun this game is. <laughs> but sometimes, actually a lot of times, they're not even looking at what's happening directly in front of them. There'll be all sorts of crazy shenanigans happening and the characters will be looking that way like, whoa, look, look what's going over there. Hey, hey, look at that, whoa. And meanwhile, the shit's happening on that side of the basketball court. Towards the end of the film, and I know this is gonna be a shocker to you, but the Toon Squad's getting their ass kicked. And so they go into the locker rooms for their little halftime break. And one of the characters, and this is the only part I actually chuckled at, the only part I, I said, <laughs> that was kind of funny, um, says, Michael Jordan's here. You know, the guy from the first film, he, the, the basketball player slash baseball player slash living legend. He's gonna come in and talk to LeBron and it's gonna be this epic moment. And they're really building it up. So clearly I already know Michael Jordan's not coming in and there's gonna be some stupid joke. But in comes Michael B. Jordan, the actor. And I thought, <laughs> okay, that was kind of funny. Even though I knew something was gonna happen and wouldn't be Michael Jordan, that was kind of funny. And I look over and none of the kids know Michael B. Jordan. So this joke once again showcases that this movie doesn't know how to write a script for both adult and kid at the same time. It just goes all in one way or the other. And so I had to stop and be like, yeah, his name is Michael B. Jordan. He's an actor. He's, um, he's Creed, in which the kids were like, mm. and I'm like, Killmonger from Black Panther. And they're like, ah, oh. I'm like, all right, let's, let's keep watching. So while the joke worked for maybe 25% of the audience, it's also simultaneously kind of a screw you to the fans of the first movie or just people that know the first film, which is, I would assume, mostly everybody watching this one that wanted to see Michael Jordan. Because now I'm thinking, all right, film, you teased him. You better come through with the actual Michael Jordan before this is over. I didn't really have any expectations, but now you're setting the stakes. You're basically saying, we're acknowledging Michael Jordan in the first film. We're gonna come through with it. And they don't. He never shows up. Well done. I should have expected nothing less from this turd factory. Since this basketball game has no rules at all and nothing makes sense, Don Cheadle decides at the end, I'm gonna power up and become the basketball player. Why he didn't do this to begin with, I'll never know because I figure beating LeBron James as a better basketball player would be even, you know, that would be like the ultimate, right? Since you apparently have a hard on for this guy, why not beat him at his own game? Qu quite literally. So now we have real looking Don Cheadle who I don't know why he's real looking to begin with inside the server verse, becoming CG monstrosity Don Cheadle, who's playing against CG nightmarish versions of the tunes, and then LeBron, who's also in his real form, and then his kid who's in his real form but has super abilities, and then the, the monster squad who has super abilities and look like spiders and shit. I, I just, what, nothing about this adds up. Then at some point, in case you weren't sick of this, there's a basketball player that comes in for no reason who can slow time down. Why doesn't he just stay in the whole goddamn game? And if you haven't already been sick and tired of the Quicksilver shit, where he goes into slow motion bullet time and everybody's kind of like doing nothing but him or Flash doing it or Sonic the Hedgehog, we get it twice I think in this with this time dude and then the Roadrunner gets a little one as well. So this just, there's no creativity anywhere in this film. Spoiler alert, the Toon Squad wins. Everything goes back to how it should be, I think. I don't know what really happens to the, the server verse. I guess, I guess algae rhythm's dead or something. Who cares? E3's back. The kids, Dom's going to E3. LeBron James grew as a person and I die a little bit more inside. I'm giving Space Jam a new shit Five out of 1,000 rabbit's feet. They, they make a rabbit's foot joke in this. And then these, these scores are highly inconsistent. If you saw Space Jam A New Legacy and agree with me, leave me a comment and tell me something you loved about it. If you did in fact like it, why? All right, that's the show. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. No, Lola didn't even move it a little when she showed up. Oh, they're still here. Hey, uh, thanks again for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. I, I put out videos weekly. It's it's a good time. We have fun here. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I have a second channel called Adam Olinger where I rant about inconsequential things. Sometimes I upload Twitch highlights. 
Yeah, I'm on Twitch too, at Adam Olinger. I'm all over the place, doing, doing pretty mediocre all around. So, support.